Good afternoon and bonjour, ladies and gentlemen. This is curator Jay Bong from Paradise Art Space again. Time flies really, and now we are reaching to the last day of our media art festival, Inkscape Voyage to Hidden Landscape. I do believe you appreciated, enjoyed, and immersed yourself of amazing three days of live performance and media facade with the constellations of artist lineup we prepared so far. Today is, um, I say, is a very important in other way because we have a precious chance to have a deep conversation with the, all the participating artists about their artworks and the theme, post-pandemic reality, with the artist as well. So the session will be as follows. The phase one will consist of the presentation from each artist about their projects, artworks, performances contributed in this festival. And the second phase, we will have a creative and free dialogue with all the artists together about the theme that penetrates all these practices we presented so far uh, that I curated uh, through this media art festival. It's a, it's a, as I said, it's a really precious chance to gather all the artists in one space and, make, and see uh, what types of creative energy and sparks are making during the creative dialogue particularly. So please stay tuned and watch the full session through the YouTube Live. Okay, so let's start with phase one session with the presentation by Mr. Herman Colgan. Thank you. Um, I have to say first that I'm very honored to be uh, invited here in the, the paradise for different uh, con consideration because uh, the technicality uh, was very, very at the top of the what we can uh, expect uh, for an artist. And uh, I presented uh, eight uh, artworks in uh, the installation at the art space. And uh, I was also challenged by Jay to present uh, three performances uh, at the Chroma tonight. And to be honest, to, to find and to uh, assemble three performances together that fit also well with the theme of, the, of this uh, event, the, the post-pandemic. Uh, so I think I will just talk about uh, maybe fast, because we don't have too, many, uh, too much time, but about the, the three performances, and you will see that is related also to the, the installation in a way. So uh, the, the three uh, performances was uh, Retina, Lingse, and uh, the commission work from the, the Paradise, Bacterium. I have to say first that uh, I can relate to each of these uh, performances by my guideline that I work for over uh, 30 years now. It's uh, the influence or the impact from the territory on our uh, human being. So how we was, we were, we we will, no, we was, we, we are, for, sorry, we are influenced by this territory that can be very uh, invisible, sometimes microscopic or uh, more large scale, like the, uh, for an example, the frequency of the earth, uh, or the wind, or also the dust in the microscopic side, or the bacteria. So I think also it's related to, uh, what we live now uh, with this pandemic. So we have also to, to uh, be a little bit more humble with the nature. Uh, we, we have to uh, 
also uh, deal with this uh, invisible uh, little microorganism that is so invisible, so uh, inoffensive, look inoffensive, but for now we remark, remark that is uh, completely change all the planet. And it, it will be probably change uh, for again and again, because I think it will be, it will be not the only uh, virus that we will have. So to make uh, short, the first uh, performance was uh, Retina. And Retina is uh, uh, the thema of uh, this performance is how we perceive the outside world, how you know how the, the overflow of the information, the image, the sound, uh, and it's more and more intense, huh? you know, by the new technology, uh, the young people also have to, to, to deal with that. And for all of us, it's, uh, it's a lot to, uh, you know, to absorb. And it's passed through our retina, first by our eyes and also uh, by, by the sound, by uh, our ears. But our retina have two, like, uh, you know, uh, camera. So they uh, record this and stuck in our brain. So I was very interested about how this data can be recorded rejected sometime and we have uh, like you know uh, uh, emotional filter that is decide uh, what what information we will be uh, more uh, in, important or more you know related to to, to uh, our personal life uh, so retina was the the first performance and i can relate to this with the one installation that is I think one of the most beautiful here uh, at the paradise is the, the installation around the, the swimming pool, uh, ocular. So ocular, uh, what is very interesting is it, it's very uh, the the swimming pool is surrounding by uh, a video display, so all the images is reflected inside uh, over the surface of the the water, and. What I like also is the audience is inside the water, and I can remark uh, a lot of difference between when you go in a, an installation in an art gallery and where when you go, for an example, in the place that is a public space, and the people stay very more long, 20 minutes, and watch and feel and and react with with the installation in the in the swimming pool. So I was very uh, very happy with this one. And it's related in Retina in the sense that uh, it talk more about not what our brain stuck, uh, what kind of information we stuck, but I talk about the cornea, so the membrane. So th this installation is just about how the light, how the image pass through our teeny, teeny membrane that uh, after that record in, in uh, our brain. The second uh, performance was Lingse. So Lingse, uh, it's now maybe uh, seven years that I tour with uh, this performance. And uh, it's from a score from uh, Philip Glass that he write in uh, 1993 uh, for the Samuel Beckett uh, uh, play. Uh, the uh, uh, wow, <laughs> I don't remember the name. <laughs> I will check my uh, my note, maybe. Yeah, yeah, it's company. That's why I, I write the C after the link C. So, um, uh, and it's uh, related uh, from an uh, old man that died in thing all over his relation, important relation in his life with the father, uh, friend, and. Uh, and I just transpose it with our relation now in our city, how we communicate and we stay in relation with each other. Uh, I know that often we say in the big city now it's impersonal, it's, uh, we are disconnected, but I feel it's, it's not totally true. And by internet now, it's the good side of internet. We are uh, in certain way uh, connected. So uh, this performance uh, is more about this and uh, it's play live with a string quartet. And that was a good good thing also because I like a lot to uh, 
not just arrive with my performance in the country and just play my performance and stop with that. I like to relate with the human uh, in, 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 and the other artists. And uh, for, for that, uh, I play with uh, G Park and his uh, Er Quartet. And uh, yeah, uh, I can say also just yeah, <laughs> well, so just to finish with uh, Bacterium. So Bacterium is a, uh, it's a new piece that was uh, commissioned by the, the Paradise. And I was teamed with the scientist, a bioscientist, Tal Danino. And we brainstorm a lot about the, the, the behavior of the bacteria. And uh, to make it short, uh, we remark that, uh, you know, uh, the bacteria have to live in community. They have to protect themselves. That they have a lot of very structured behavior in their movement to, uh, you know, to react with the, the, the hostile uh, environment. And it's so related on our, what we live now. So we, you know, we have to relate each other. We have to protect each other. We have to strong some link between human to survive, to, uh, uh, to uh, be more strong with, with this uh, virus. So uh, Bacterium was uh, so very uh, uh, linked to, to this uh, thema. Oh, oh, sorry, <laughs> it's finished. <laughs> Because uh, I think it's too long now. Uh, yeah. Okay. So yeah, time time pressure actually exists to today's session because we have a lot of artists today. So um, I think Kogan even forgot to I would say present his slides as well and they did a yeah the display. But yeah, yeah. Because I bring all my research for the bacteria. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay. So yeah, let's swiftly move to the next section. Probably hope definitely hopefully with the slides. The, each artist, I would say, considerably prepared. Okay, so let's, I would say, move on to the Yi Yang Gang's presentation. Hi, everybody. Can I have my material on the screen, please? Hi, my name is Yi Yang Kang. I'm an artist. Um, Okay, so uh, my role in this uh, massive project called Inkscape is actually the, the large-scale facade mapping on the public part of the Paradise City. So it was actually quite humongous building, which is like eight meters in width. What, what does it say? Okay, so should I? Okay, oops. Okay, yes, to introduce my work, this is the building. Um, so Colgan's work and my work is playing together until next February. So if you're around Korea, it would be really great if you come to see it in person. And the title of my work is No Mother Nature. Um, because uh, when I, when Jay and I first started to discuss about the whole project, it's, uh, my role is slightly different from the other participating artists because I'm not a performer. I don't use, it's not about sound performance and it's about the media facade, which is pretty much public space in the Paradise City. So um, I just, I thought that I took this facade as a mural, digital mural, where we can have um, public, discussion about what is going on, you know, in the post-pandemic era. So I decided to name it No Mother Nature because I think that the term Mother Nature has a really huge problem inside of it. And we've been using it for thousands of years already. So uh, let's just go to the next page. Yes. Oh, it's quite small. Okay, so my work aims to tackle the term Mother Nature. Humanity has been anthropomorphizing nature by calling it Mother Nature for thousands of years, and we regard nature as embracing mother. So it doesn't matter how we mess things up because mother will embrace us and heal us. So that is the 
ontological framework that we made for ourselves to exploit the nature, and that is how we endangered nature. And I think the COVID-19 is just the beginning of it. We will face another and another pandemics after this. So that will be pretty much probably the most frustrating parts for me. So I wanted to talk about some, um, why should we call it as mother nature rather than accept it as it is? Because nature is an entity. We cannot fully fathom. The whole algorithm behind of a nature is some, something beyond our interpretation. So in this, at the same time, it's a um, public facade. So, oh, did I do something wrong? Yeah, so as you see, this is like six minutes long facade mapping. It started from the building itself, the white, blank building and it starts to transform into kind of let's say living creature as it transforms itself and it turns into some sort of forest and then it continues there's a sense of you know mara incognitum or terra incognita the various sins of landscape which is magnificent but at the same time it looks sometimes dangerous and it looks sometimes precarious because I think that is the essence of nature, which is we cannot fully understand. So yeah, this is the beginning of the work where the white building trans transforms itself into a kind of mysterious creature and then it continues to a forest. Um, so what it said? Yeah, nature is not an embracing mother, but a dynamic, random and heterogeneous being that exists in constant flux. So in this work, nature just constantly transforming, transmorphosizing into different beings. So I try to capture the image of the earth uh, in a diverse way, hoping that I could describe, I could illustrate the biodiversity. And then, because oh, I'm sorry that I couldn't insert the video of it because the premiere was just happened two days ago. So there is a seascape, there is a landscape, and there is a mysterious like forest escape. And then for me, the most important part of this uh, projection mapping piece happens at the very last oops, part, which is you know, starting from here. This is a real footage that I um, filmed with the water performer, with the real camera crew, because I wanted to talk about, we should stop calling it mother. So that's the reason why I used a female performer rather than male performer. Um, Is this? Okay, so the, in the last part of the work, the woman's body is submerging into the debote. This is to avoid the sexist interpretations of nature and to fathom nature as a dynamic force that can swallow humanity in just one second. I just wanted to say that there is no mother nature. So this, because I want to, you know, make, um, incorporate digital and physical and real footage and, you know, generated footages at the same time into, into this six minutes long video hoping to hoping to provide some dynamic discussion people who see this and the pe an artist participating in this inscape project so yeah well, that that'll be it thank you thanks very much Ian. i would say you know, as i have to i would say reiterate that the first impression that i got from his artwork is really so recharging that i will i will take talk in the last part okay so yeah matthew would you? Hello? Yeah, okay. Ah, here we are. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, I wasn't going to. <laughs> Thanks. Anyway, my, my name is Matthew Biederman. Uh, I was going to wait to show the slides, but we'll, we'll kick it off here. Uh, but I wanted to start with uh, just thanking everybody, the team here. It's uh, been a real honor 
to uh, to work and especially to come back to work uh, after such a long hiatus, be in front of uh, some people, be with uh, my colleagues, art, fellow artists, fellow technicians, and especially to be here in Korea, the home of uh, probably one of the biggest inspirations of my work, Nam Jun Paik, who uh, you know has also my favorite quote about technology since we're talking about technological-based art, it's uh, using technology in order to hate it more properly, which is a good jumping off point to talk about uh, a little bit of my uh, perspective on the use and misuse of technology um, and its uh, reliance on the signal, the digit, the, uh, the digitized signal and uh, introducing a little bit of error and using the signal as, in fact, uh, uh, the medium itself and not trying to necessarily uh, depict a particular uh, perspective or uh, relying on kind of cinematic uh, tropes, let's say, but, but to really use these uh, opportunities, at least in uh, audiovisual performance, to manipulate uh, the material that is our uh, surrounding us, the, the digits, the waveforms, the, uh, the signal, and infuse it with a bit of humanistic um, uh, gestural uh, opportunities. And, and that kind of plays into the concept of uh, incertitude. And so the, the, one of the perspectives that as the visual half of the um, of the performance uh, that, I, that I'm responsible for, where Elaine is uh, responsible for the audio portion, which he'll talk about in a moment. But my perspective is to really uh, uh, dig in and use uh, some analog systems uh, and uh, allow for the space to have, the, allow for the system to have some incertitude within the actual playing of a, uh, of a system, so, uh, and, and that goes back to, to this idea of incertitude, the kind of Heisenbergian, um, it's also the uncertainty principle in French, in incertitude. Uh, so it's, it's this inability to, uh, to place or to understand where a particle is or the speed in which it's moving. We can determine that only only one of those things with any degree of accuracy. So it's uh, this kind of quantum uh, paradox that has yet to be sort of understood in all of its uh, in all of its uh, sort of complexity. In which you know, if we do begin to understand that, maybe the you know. Uh, we can finally uh, come to term with Einstein's uh, general theory of relativity, but that I w I'll try not to get too too geeky with with that. But um, this sort of this kind of process and the I think the emotion of the the project for me is about this speed. Uh, for those of you that have seen it either live or will see it here on YouTube, you know it's. There's a lot of speed, there's a lot of emotion. It's kind of a, a, a thing that sort of chugs along and is very a uh, physical kind of uh, situation, let's say. And uh, maybe at this point I'll, I'll hand it to, uh, oh, please. Voila, voila, okay. Uh, first of all, I want to I have no choice than to thank you, Jay. You are the mastermind of this old, whole uh, project, crazy project, and uh, it's it's amazing that uh, it's. I think it was impossible that we would be here. Thank you to to the Quebec delegation office also in Seoul. Without them, we would not be here for Quebecois from Montreal. And I want to thank my team at Electra in Montreal. They, they were very helpful working on the promotion of the event internationally, etc., etc. So the work we did, uh, it's, it's, I think it's the fourth uh, pieces, uh, piece. With, I think we did three performances, one, uh, one installation together. And uh, the way uh, Matthew worked, 
is uh, using all those abstracts, images, and visuals uh, was really interesting for me because I really wanted to find, since since year since the year 2000, to find uh, to create a new uh, language in terms of uh, audiovisual. You know, to to be able to create a new entity. We have visual, we have the audio, and uh, all these two medium can blend together to create really one entity. And uh, I had a témoignage, what is témoignage? Uh, some people were telling me uh, they did not, they were not able to make the difference between the visual and the, the music or the audio. And I think it's really something that came out from this uh, New discipline, artistic dis discipline that we call, when we used to call electro electronic art, that became digital art, and we'll see what it will become. Be maybe bec it's going to become only art. That's a <laughs> <laughs> so, and especially the the piece we did here at Paradise was uh, super interesting because the instrument we had, the Chroma Club, which with is. Uh, a wonderful sound, powerful sound system, and this very large LED uh, vi video system also was perfect, you know, to create this very abstract, very, with powerful, lots of rhythm, and uh, that was the idea, to find the specificity of the instrument, of the medium, and create something for it. Yeah, yeah I think in terms of that, it's, a, it's sort of... A, uh, one plus one equals three situation. There's always a bit, a bit more, which also plays back to the the sort of complexity uh, of the of the kind of uncertainty principle, as well as this sort of dichotomy uh, between this sort of wave particle. But yet, you know, we have uh, light, which of course is what we all perceive within this electromagnetic spectrum. But we have yet to understand if light behaves as a wave or a particle. But what it does do is it creates our sort of visual experience of the world. So uh, it is another one plus one equals three. So it's a, a very similar situation as to this audiovisual, I think, perspective that we share in our performances. So. Yeah, and the, the idea to, to work on uh, this uh, Eisenberg principle, it re was really... Um, how can I see? You start with the idea, but you create something around. It's not a, a direct representation of a scientific uh, proce process or phenomena, for example. And this is this is what I like about uh, art then linked to science. Definitely. Thanks for your presentation. I always say I have to make a confession that I would say. Uh, someone says it is not good to, but uh, I myself as a tech geek and <laughs> and, and as I said, the, the, why, when I heard that the, the uncertainty principle, uh, the artists were working on uncertainty principle, I just told Alan that he's the one that I'm looking for. And, and let me clearly reiterate again here that every single moment that I'm working with Matthew and Alan just satiate my spirit, intellectual and even spiritual <laughs> desire. Thank you. Okay, so next, uh, Lucas. I'll take the one. Uh, okay, so, oh, do I have to go through? Oh, oh no. So, yeah, I also have to thank uh, Jay and the entire team here also for, uh, yeah, the great conditions they gave us to create new works, and without them, this these works wouldn't, exist right now um, so yeah it was the best conditions to be able to create um, so if the slides are working click uh, down oh, the down button oh do I have to go through all of it yeah okay. you have to make a long trip to reach your yeah <laughs> you have 37 slides <laughs> It's going to take a while. Okay. <laughs> so here is Matthew's work. Gosh, Matthew. Uh, this one. <laughs> 
too well prepared. <laughs> this is sabotage. Ah, okay. Okay, so um, so I created a new work for uh, this event called uh, Sustained Light Chain. Uh, maybe I'm gonna quickly go through some selected works kind of to arrive to the work I created for uh, this event. Um, so I've been uh, building a lot of uh, instruments, uh, software, uh, doing some visual research for the past 15, 20 years and um, in my work, I usually, uh, it's very technical where I get into creating my own software, controllers, uh, systems, and actually it's been about, what it's been about is working with the synthetic and synthetic material. Um, and so I use a lot of audio synthesis and I think uh, visuals, I create visuals also in a very synthetic matter, manner. Um, like generative real time and it's synthesis and it's mathematics all happening at once and that I have control of and that I'm, that I'm organizing and using as a medium. Um, so for this work, um, uh, yeah also so I, I started kind of uh, recently works with uh, the anti-volume series um, which was about light in space and energy moving through the space. So using this synthetic material and transposing it through the use of uh, light sculptures to create a physical and emotional performance. Um, so it's gone over many iterations over the years and different setups, different ways of using light and trying to represent energy and this synthetic energy of signals and mathematics in space. Uh, then uh, another work called Emotional Synthesis, which was my first work with a video. Um, so using, again, generative real-time video. Um, I use no video clips in my work, like no fixed medium. It's all uh, math happening at once uh, on the spot um, through shaders and uh, software. Uh, and this work was touching on themes of kind of commercial branding, advertisements, uh, the way advertisement is really very present in our lives and kind of overwhelming us and influencing us on a really subconscious level. And I wanted to create a kind of a space of freedom from that, but kind of like reflecting on it. Um, here are some images. Uh, this work was an installation, just again, kind of working with light, working with this concept of uh, advertising and like these kind of advertising LED panels that try to grab your attention but then kind of do their thing together when they're closed. And so, and this is uh, another work leaning up to the work I created here uh, that was about continuing this, this look at commercial powers and advertising powers and also dipping my toes into game engines and uh, as a really interesting medium that's emerging or well has been emerging for a long time. Um, so finally we arrive at Sustained Light Chain which was the work uh, commissioned for this event. Um, when I was th first thinking about the themes and proposed themes um, I really wanted to recenter on the environment and, of course, the um, uh, global warming crisis. Um, like, we've been thinking a lot about it. It's on everybody's mind. Um, so I thought this would really be like a, a theme that should be central. And um, I've been kind of thinking about it from an angle of um, how we can change the materiality around us and how it's happening slowly and uh, getting away from plastics, from uh, uh, made from oil. And I, I think there's a lot of enthusiasm going around even like on a smaller scale, not just like from the top, even like people are trying to like kind of the DIY culture or trying to, you know, make change happen from the bottom, not waiting for change to happen from the top. 
So I've been, you know, thinking a lot about how can I really change my habits of how the, yeah, how I live, like for even like food or products. Um, and I see there's like really a lot of enthusiasm also of people using creative creativity to, um, to change materiality and um, with, you know, like uh, alternative materials, biodegradable materials. So I was really like looking at all of that for influence. Um, and so I was working with kind of um, sculpting in 3D, um, these kind of um, also kind of organic materials, um, thinking about chain reactions also in the natural world. Um, so what kind of like emerged is this abstract mater materiality that in the same continuity of my past works. Um, yeah, and that's it for me. Yeah, amazing. So, um, yeah, he's the yeah, actually he's the young blood of the entire line of in our fest live festival. So um, yeah, really got the energy and I mean the motivation not from his artwork but the, all these his amazing I would say the, the the comments and energy in the act as well. Okay, so now. We're moving swiftly, quickly to the Makina's presentation. Hi, um, I'm Makina, and I must say, I I am really honored of this opportunity, and thank you, Jay, for every curation and this condition, like Lucas said, was, it has been an amazing few days for all of us. And yeah, actually, I'm not a good speaker, so excuse me that I'm going to just read this. Um, oh, OK. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. So today, I would like to talk about the story of my album, Compost Point, which was the starting point for the performance that I present through Inkscape called Mirror, the Compost Point, on Friday at Chroma. I have always been interested in the invisible things that we live in among. That's why I'm in love with music in the first place, because I feel that sound is clear proof that invisible material can be stronger than visible. On another level, over the past two years, we have faced another thing that we cannot see with our own eyes, but that has immensely a lasting impact on our global society. COVID-19 could not be seen, but its immensity has been felt all across the world, almost suffocating us in every small part of our daily lives. This microscopic virus that we continue to face has so much power because we cannot see it. And for that reason, this has definitely been much more scary than any visible danger. I'm often thinking that we are actually right in the middle of World War III. As a product of this fast and free world we created, COVID has been a warning sign, giving us time and space to step back and think about the relationship between nature, ourselves, and each other. Humans created the tools and rules for our convenience, but nature never told us such a thing. We made a society for a better life and to help each other, but at the same time, we have lost our individual freedom. This system is perhaps the most powerful thing humans ever created. So I decided to make a few, I make a new album amidst this terrible context. I started to think about how isolation might actually be a positive thing. So I made a, decided to actively isolate myself to create a scenario where time and space were mine, and I could use this distance as a way to explore this, their relationship. That's the hut that I'm going to talk about next. <laughs> 
So I decided to go to the mountains and borrow the hut for a month to put myself in total isolation with barely another person in sight, 2,000 meters higher than I usually sit, much closer to the sky, much closer to the ground. Here, I could step back and from the system and avoid all the possible offer effect could be control that could make me believe something that I didn't really want to. This is the hut in April. Yeah. So in my little mountain hut, I became much more attuned with, my, with the world around me and then somehow more aligned with the world inside me. So I have prepared a little video about this album. So could you please play that one minute video, please? Everything has a start and an end, a front and back. We live by supporting each other as a part of nature, on track, surviving yet without really knowing direction. I was afraid, but I had to face it, leaving me completely alone and then slowly looking inside me. It's not about picking around and letting it float like a cloud, but holding it, shaping it, and speaking out loud. Yeah, um, for my Inkscape performance uh, last Friday, I expanded these ideas through two modes of expression. First, I created the stage set as a crystal-like structure of mirrored surface and laser lighting that would point lights in an infinite number of directions. In a way, I hope this would express the main idea of the album. The complexity of the, of the self and the relationship to the world around us. Compass point leading from within. Secondly, I perform in music using a quadraphonic sound system. This basically means sounds was projected from four sources. Split between each speaker, it created a spacious express, expression of sound, creating direction, pointing music across the space. This sound setup actually works well with my music as I use a combination of analog synthesizer, modular, dig uh, digital synths, field recording, and my vocals, which can be easily separated into their own pure form. In the end, I feel that this kind of critical awareness is really important to find out who we are, which can be the first step to understanding each other and this world, and I hope this work and these ideas can motivate others to look beyond the everyday and the creative something space to think and realize the present. Thank you. Amazing, I would say. She's the particularly unique, I would say, takes a particularly unique position in the artist lineup because she's the only one that touches I would say not the, 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 the specific theme, or the, the, but more like, a, more like a more fundamental way that the, 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 the thinking make us thinking about the deep side, deep down there of our own selves, uh, which I will also talk in the second phase session as well. Okay, so now it's time for uh, Yano's presentation, and I will, I will say I will take the privilege as uh, working for as a, his translator. Yeah, Yano. Yeah. Uh, first of all. Uh, I'm not really good at English, so uh, I will speak Korean. Uh, sorry for that. So uh, Jay will translate it uh, if we need. 네, 네, 안녕하세요. 저는 연호라고 합니다. 네. 아, 일단 작업에 대해서 얘기를 해보면 처음에 이제 어, 
방재훈 큐레이터한테 제가, 제가 이제 작품 의뢰를 받았을 때 어, 포스트 판데믹, 네, 판데믹 이후의 상황에 관련된 작품을 이렇게 의뢰를 받았는데 사실은 저 개인적으로도 이미 항상 이제 아무래도 제가 이제 예술가로서 그러니까 새로운 거나 그 그런 저 우리가 앞으로 어떻게 해야 되는가에 대해서 항상 고민을 하는 부분이 있었기 때문에 사실 특별히 뭐 포스트 판데믹에 관련된 부분을 제가 따로 염두에 두지 않고 제가 작업을 평소에 해오고 있던 방향이나 이런 것들을 가급적 잘 추취합해서 하면 좋겠다라고 생각을 했어요. 그래서 아 제가 아무래도 이제 한국에서 활동을 하는 부분의 많은 부분은 역시 이제 아무래도 이제 사운드적인 작업이라든가 음악 작업들이 많은데 그 중에도 이제 최근에 이제 모듈라 신스 관련된 부분들이 굉장히 많아요. 근데 이제 아무래도 이제 모듈라 신스라는 것라는 악기 자체가 이렇게 굉장히 인터랙티브한 그러니까 이렇게 일방적으로 컴퓨터를 활용한 작업 같이 프리 레코딩이 돼 있다든가 아니면 기본적으로 어느 정도 기본적으로 이렇게 다 짜여진 형태로 플레이하는 방식이 아니라 실제로 전자음악을 약간 아날로그 방식들 아니면 전통적인 방식의 뭐 이제 어 연주자들이 연주하는 방식으로 굉장히 인터랙티브하게 연주하는 그런 부분들이 강하기 때문에 이제 그런 어 부분들을 초점을 맞춰서 이제 기본적으로 사운드 제작을 하고 대신 하나 이제 제가 가장 중점을 많이 뒀던 것 중에 하나는 이제 전자음악이 갖는 굉장히 이렇게 미니멀한 특성들이 있습니다. 이제 루프 베이스 형태의 음악들이라 아무래도 근데 그런 것들을 좀 탈피해서 가급적이면 아 전자음악이지만 어 조금 더 서사적인 부분을 좀 갖고 그리고 전자음악이 같지 않은 좀 약간 우리가 일반적인 어뭐 클래식컬 음악이라든가 아니면 재즈 음악이라든가 이런 부분에서 차용될 수 있는 부분들을 최대한 많이 이렇게 음악에 표현하려고 일단은 노력을 했습니다. Okay. Yeah. So, oh, quite. It's quite long. Okay. So, <laughs> right. Um, help me, my brain. Okay. Um, okay. So, hi. My name is Yono, uh, the artist. I'm really honored to participate in this event and. When Jay Bong, curator Jay Bong, called me to ask for joining this project, I was uh, particularly about the theme of post-pandemic reality. Actually, that's the one of the things that I'm currently uh, working on and have an interest as well. So, um, so basically, my expert, my area of expertise lies in the so-called electric music, particularly the so-called the modular synth music. So, and um, the, the, the the thing is that the modular synth music, the one of the key aesthetics that modular synth ha music has, sound has, is the real-time, is real-time aspect. It's not a pre-programmed, it's not an organized one, but it's just constantly changes, I would say, uh, in accordance with the operators and manipulations and the, the, the other inputs. So using this, using this aesthetics for this project, I was more fully focused on the the making the sound itself uh, uh, in, in lockstep with the, this theme. But the, the other thing that I really would like to uh, achieve, I mean, through this project is that normally the norm modular synth music's nature is more like a minimal loop based. That has, that's the nature the modular synth music has. But uh, through this project, I tried to break the, that kind of conventional approach to the modular synth music by making the sound with the visual, real-time interactive performances with more poetic and uh, poetic narratives within it. That's the, and that's the objective that I conceived after, I would say, after say okay, saying okay to Jay's suggestion. Yeah, 그래서 일단 작업을 보면요. Uh, Down button. Oh, 화면이 안 나오네. 그래서 지금 화면상에서 나오듯이 이렇게 뭐 파티클 형태 여러 가지 것들이 있는데 일단 저는 이번 작업을 개인적으로는 사실은 비주얼 작업은 이렇게 퍼블릭하기는 사실은 처음이에요. 아, 그래, 아, 그래서 아, 제 작품 컨셉에 맞게 아, 기본적으로 이렇게 실사 이미지와 그 다음에 컴퓨팅에 의해서 이렇게 제너레이트 되어 있는 이미지들을 어, 가급적이면 조금은 더 유기적인 방식으로 비주얼이 이렇게 어, 
리얼타임 인터랙티브한 방식으로 이렇게 연주되면 좋겠다라는 게 기본적인 컨셉이었습니다. 그래서 실제로도 이렇게 보시면 예 이렇게 저 안에 지금 살짝 보면 파티클 이미지 안에 어, AI 이미지라든가 뭐 이런 것들을 통해서 예, 예, 다양하게 뭐 하튼간 예, 멋지게 하려고 노력을 했습니다. 그래서 아 그리고 일단은 작품의 아주 기본적인 컨셉을 얘기를 하자면 제가 이걸 잠깐 지금 정신이 없어갖고 말씀을 못 드렸는데 아, 아 제가 느낀 이 소위 요즘 얘기하는 뭐 머신러닝이니 AI니 뭐 제너레이티브 아트니 이런 부분들 그래서 특히 AI에 관련된 부분에서 한 가지 아쉬웠던 점들은 뭐냐면 그러니까 이게 너무 인간을 위주로 인간만을 위한 예. 그러니까 모든 기술이 인간의 편의에 초점이 맞춰진 형태로만 발전하는 것들에 대한 문제의식이 제 개인적으로 좀 평소에 있었기 때문에 이게 결국 AI라고 얘기하는 인공지능이 어느 정도 예. 이상의 실제로 지금도 뭐 이미 인간의 능력의 한계를 벗어나는 분들이 굉장히 많기 때문에 그러면 그게 자아를 갖는다는 얘기인 거고 자아를 갖는다는 얘기는 결국 인격체라는 얘기인데 그럼 어디까지 뭐 그걸 단순히 AI 물건으로 생각할 것인지 아니면 진짜 인격체인 사람과 같이 생각할 것인지에 대한 고민을 좀 해야 된다 그리고 그게 바탕이 되지 않으면 어 그게 인류의 행복이나 편 편의를 위해서 만들어진 AI 기술이 그렇게 좋은 결과만을 내지는 않을 거다라는 내용이었고 그래서 실제로도 이미지 안내 보면 다양한 형태로 어 실사 이미지와 아까 말씀드렸던 그 다음에 제너레이트 때는 여러 가지 다양한 이미지들을 활용을 했는데 왜안 나오죠? 아 비디오구나. Time to translate. You know? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the okay again. Yeah. Bravo, my brain. Okay. So. Uh, so the, the approaches that I took for this project is that the, it's, a, it's a more like a very organic confluation between the computer-generated images and the real, real I mean, graphics that I collected from the real world. So that's the basic, I would say, the, the methodology that I took for creating the, 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 these unique pieces for this project. And, the, and as for the theme uh, and my perspective uh, for the so-called post-pandemic reality, is very much uh, more very much about the human AI relationship. So particularly uh, the, the, the challenges against the, its human-centric perspective or human-centric approach towards the AI, meaning that humans normally, I mean, they normally, it's, a, it's like, a, like a more like a conventional, it becomes conventional that humans of the regard AI as a very convenient and high-handed tools or the things that the machines that are ready to serve and and we could endlessly exploit and use it and utilize and even 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 prey on so so what i want to deliver is that i really i really have have a strong as i said up um, opposite i'm in the really opposite position uh, against this type of uh, type of uh, i think a concept that I, so that i try to emphasize that ai is not that thing AI is already becoming. It becoming and it already becomes the other I. In this context, I does not mean an individual, the, the, the meaning that the human, the, the entity or another beings that we, has its own intelligence, its identity, its own, I would say, it's even its own creative in the future. So that's, that's my perspective uh, and answer towards the question, what is it like in the post-pandemic reality? the humans, AI's uh, relationship, because, you know, even all of the audiences who are watching this relies on the AI-based YouTube algorithm channels, right? So, um, so yeah, we are, AI is all becoming already an integral part of us, and uh, so the, 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 the forcing or illustrating uh, the future, its future landscape uh, via my artwork could be very meaningful. Yeah, so... 어, 그냥 제가 일단 작품에 관련된 설명은 대부분 다한것 같고요. 아, 마지막으로 예, 이렇게 아주 훌륭하신 큐레이팅을 해주신 어, 방재훈 대리님에게 예, 감사를 드리고 그리고 어, 이렇게 좋은 기회를 주신 파라다이스 시티 관계자 여러분들에게도 다시 한번 감사를 드립니다. 감사합니다.
it sounds a bit quick jump, but that's the core concept of the, the, my artwork introduction and my project introduction for this program. And I, again, deeply appreciate the, the curator Jay Bong and entire Paradise City and all the other staff and even the artist, artist who joined uh, in this lineup for all the contributions they made for presenting my artwork in this project. Thank you very much. Okay, so, um, so seems like we all covered the artist, each artist presentation about his own art world and the, the artwork, uh, the art piece, artworks that uh, the, the, he or she uh, created for this project as well. I think now, now is the time to declare a very delightful surprise as well. Actually, I would say, of course, Inkscape, the Voyage to Hidden Landscape program starts uh, its ambitious first step in this year and will uh, start its global premiere in next year at Electra Montreal Media Festival with the amazing help with uh, my uh, admired and cherished friend Alain Thibault. But it's very inception. I mean, the very starting point or the seed starts from last year's uh, uh, the, the media program called A Perceptional Glimpse Traumatized Convention, uh, uh, simply saying AGTC. So uh, the surprise that I prepared for you and the artists for it is that we now have uh, art, the featuring artist Shohei Kyoka, who joined the previous year's uh, media program about the, not the post-pandemic, but the, about mainly about the pandemic itself. So they will now they will more than happy to join as a sort of an alumni or alumni of this entire, I would say, the, the, the voyage that I designed. So I think it's uh, maybe it's a good idea to hear uh, about their projects, uh, short, sh I would say, just quickly uh, so that we could, I would say, make some more rich context about what we're going to uh, discuss in our next phase uh, session. Okay, so... Shohei Kyoka, are you there? Yeah, um, could you, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you and yeah, uh, okay. Okay. Uh, we can see you also. Okay, Gonnichiwa. Okay, can, can you hear me now? Okay. And Kyoka, you there too? Yeah, hello. Okay, okay. so can, we can see you, Kyoka. Could yeah. you uh, turn on your video as well? Oh. Am I video not on? Okay, no. now we're looking at you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. So, so um, let, me, let me explain yeah. at first for me. Sorry? No? Uh, yes. Okay, as, as far as uh, thank you for intro introducing us. And I'm Shohei Fujimoto and an artist based in, based in Tokyo. And we were participating in. Uh, project Paradise City uh, last year and I'm happy to join um, this talk session and actually I, I saw a live set on first day and it's, it was great <laughs> and okay so let me explain uh, like a procedure uh, from Tokyo to Incheon 2020 uh, as showing a video I prepared so, uh, would you mind uh, playing a video I pre provided? Yes. So, footage okay. is ready. Now go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Video play, just there. Ah, uh, sorry. Uh, I I can't see a video. Ah, uh, I can see now. Okay, this thing was um, this was this thing was taken in airport, I guess Narita or Haneda, and there was no uh, people, and yeah, it, it this is completely uh, like another world at this moment. And I got uh, isolation uh, two weeks in Incheon 
and uh, this thing was um, yeah, it's like a memory in isolation place. Uh, yeah, good memory. Uh, it was not good, but not uh, bad. <laughs> Yeah, we all know. <laughs> yeah, the quarantine, two weeks quarantine. Yeah. And then um, this is um, the situation in on site, and we prepared uh, twenty laser bars. I and I installed installed them on the floor and this is um, inspection and it was it was difficult to uh, tell situation of the sound to yeah, Kyoka, Kyoka will be speaking or uh, uh, we were uh, confirming uh, visuals I made uh, via Zoom and and we tried we tried uh, send send and receive sound signals uh, from from Berlin to Incheon and finally uh, we we used team viewer uh, just to confirm and to control sound PC from Berlin. And we, uh, we shared uh, each parameter exactly uh, like this. And this part is important, important for me, the distance of PC1, PC2, um uh, could you stop that uh a video I made a uh, virtual sphere uh, using countless laser laser modules. And and as we know, COVID is invisible, but we captured, uh, we have been capturing uh, existence of COVID. So I I treated as I treat I treated uh, COVID 19 as ingredient visuals. Thank you. Thank you very much, Shohei. And I believe Kyoka is now listening just out of this video as well. So I think it's a very, I would say, good opportunity to what we did, me, Shohei, Kyoka did last year uh, to, I would say, make the very, I would say, the initial or pre 
I, I don't say primeval, but it's uh, our initial journey that leads to the, I would say, the birth of the this year's Inkscape uh, program. Okay, so now I think we are uh, reaching to the end of the phase one session, but no interval. So now let me quickly, I would say, the uh, ignite uh, this this the second phase of our uh, artist talk today. So as I said, uh, the second phase artist talk will be uh, the creative and free dialogue uh, among the artists, including Shohei and Kyoka, uh, about the so-called the post-pandemic reality uh, of this, uh, the, the, which is the main theme of this program. So to, to, to make it more specific and easy to comprehend, uh, let me take it, explain it this way. If you go to the gallery or museum and look at the landscape painting, the painting, the visual consists of many parts of nature, right? Skies, mountains, waterfalls, trees, rocks. So all the ingredients consist, constitutes the overall visual of the landscape painting. So through this, I would say just like these I would say components constitute the overall specific landscape. What I try to deliver by, through this program is also the hidden landscape, but uh, that will come to the surface in the near future after this pandemic with a totally, that's why I call it post-pandemic real, real post re reality. So like, for example, for, through the Herman and Eon's practices, we we are now delivering messages about the human nature, I would say relationship, the human's paradigm or human's way of thinking, change, change of the human's way of thinking after this pandemic. And for Matthews, with the Matthew and Alan's performance, we're talking about this uncertainty, the, 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 the one of the aspects that made us all feel very hard and very clearly uh, that be, do, uh, the, the, do, uh, derived uh, from this pandemic, even societal way and even technological way. You know that the quantum computer- Recording in progress. Uh, yeah, I know that, recording in progress. Yeah, we all know that. Okay, so, <laughs> yeah. So you know that the, even the quantum computing technology already becomes a part, right? So in technologically and societally uncertainty, is making his faces new again after this pandemic. And Lucas's, for Lucas' performance, for example, I would say the virtual and the real, the materiality, even, yeah, even, look at, look at this. Shohei and Kyoka are virtually here, yeah, right? And without any physical body material. But this is the reality, the pandemic, just, as I said, facilitates us to behave. And Makina, we are, we, all the sorrows and all the regrets, all the new discovery, all the inspirations we got uh, from this pandemic. Through Makina, I try to make, make the audience see themselves literally digging into their inscape and try to, I would say, um, try to discover themselves in new way uh, uh, to prepare more, to be more prepared for the post pandemic. And Yono, as I said, AI, should I say more about that? Yeah, AI becomes some like um, commodity and not just commodity we could utilize, but the commodity, uh, not the, as, I, as Yono just uh, the, 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 uh, reiterates that the, 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 the subject with its independent identity and the realities. So it's a, it's a okay, forgive me, if, forgive me if I do not, does not use this French word appropriately, for through this grand, <laughs> grand uh, voyage, starting from Shohei's and Kyoka's performance from the previous year until today, after we all presented our practices to the audiences. This is, we are in the great transition period, in my opinion, that we have to build the new landscape of the post-pandemic 
uh, consists of AI, quantums, uncertainties, and virtuals, and the human natures. And these all things are gathered into, I would say, the, to illustrate the post-pandemic reality, uh, a landscape painting called uh, post-pandemic reality. So this is the thing that I, will, I am now keen to discuss with all the artists uh, who are sitting here today. So, so my not questions, my topic naturally leads to what each artist, I would say, post-pandemic landscape they are now having in their head and then what, how that will stimulate or functions to their, as I said, creatives and um, their own perspectives to comprehend uh, uh, the sur their surroundings and even their own art world as well. So that's the topic that I brought he uh, uh, for all of you, the artists for here today. So maybe I think starting from Herman maybe? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I can start just to say that the at the same time, is is the history of the humanity. It's not the first time, uh, not just for the virus, but the the, the humanity have to react uh, and and adjust, like like everything in the nature. So it was war. It was the la grippe espagnole in the past. It was uh, some uh, uh, king that the the uh, you know the abuse. Uh, uh, from their uh, people in the country, so we we in a way we have always to be very flexible and to react what uh, uh, is a little bit modify our environment. So this pandemic is maybe something now that that is globally, uh, you know, it's around all the all the the country. So it's something very special. Uh, it w it will be also in the near future that the the weather and we will have to react f with something that I think will be very more important than this uh, pandemic. But <clears throat> on, on, on my personal uh, perspective, I can say that I reflect a lot about this and I start to change my habit about the, the creation, uh, not just about the travel, the, the flight and everything, but I mean also, uh, the device that I need for creating my my work. Uh, in the past, you know, uh, like uh, a lot of artists, we are very spontaneous. We are in the, the kind of fever of creation. I order something and uh, I use it to, to build my thing. And, and now I start to uh, just question if what I buy, is it, is it, uh, created or produced in with a certain respect with with the you know with the nature and sometimes uh, I try because to be honest it's very not so easy it's easy to to uh, to to uh, be conscious about that but it's another thing that to to you know to to be uh, more uh, to integrate this in my day-to-day -day creation and to stop uh, hurting and uh, hurry to, to buy something and maybe wait to have a project that is maybe more su sustainable, sustainable with, 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 you know, the, 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 the way that the company produces it and the, the ways of each of these uh, components. So, yeah, it's beside the food, it's beside for sure all the other thing that uh, all the people have to take care of, but an artistic point of view and an artistic behavior in the creation for me, it's just trying to add this in my, uh, in, in, in my, um, in my uh, way to work. It's, a, it's, it's be amplified with the pandemic, yeah. Right. Um, I think Matthew's got something to say. Yeah. Yes. I think uh, in light of what Herman was just saying, that's one of the, uh, I mean, for me, it, it's so important as an artist to be able to share our work. And this is, you know, to be able to, this is the first time for me, at least, to be able to come back together with 
colleagues, meet new artists, see new work, be inspired by that. But it's also, in terms of what Herman was talking about with the sustainability, these ideas, it's one of the attractive things of doing performative work because uh, making uh, large scale installations and these sorts of things, it, it, you, you can reuse a lot of the same tools that you've developed for earlier performances and it's this kind of ephemeral moment to be able to share your art, your perspective, your vision in a way that doesn't uh, leave a huge amount of stuff when you're left over. You know, we all, we all used the same sound system. We used the same screens. I mean, maybe a little bit with a different variety, but this was the same kind of uh, instrument and space, which I think is a, points to an interesting paradigm for art making, art sharing, and, and these sorts of things. Yeah, clearly, because, yeah, that's, that's one of the, clearly one of the unique nature yeah, that that has become the part of this program as well, and 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 I know that was Makina also was very heavily inspired and impressed by Herman's artwork as well. Yeah, during the pandemic. So and also the unique, as I said, uh, as I've said in the, in the previous session, uh, given her unique, I would say the nature of his performances, touching the, as I said, the inscape of the humans. So I would say I am very curious about your, I would say, uh, opinions about my. Topic. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, this works. Um, I focus the inner self because I think that's the f that's the only thing I can fully invest in. Probably the mm, first thing I can do something in this situation because <laughs> I can control myself, right? Mm, and then as I see this uh, situation into more like a political kind of competitions and the other, you know, you can see a lot of ugly stuff and I felt really sad. <laughs> and I really wanted to do something and like sending some message that we can still change ourselves if you actually know how this system works and try to aware things. And I think the next landscape definitely can be more um, individual and then more care, like, and of course, living with the landscape. And we actually really need to, like, Ian and Herman, everyone agreed, I, I believe, that we need to think about the nature first. Because we're just borrowing this, we, we never own it. Yeah, that's my opinion. <laughs> yeah, just, I would say, I totally agree, and just Makina, as Makina just created the, the natural flow, I think this also, can, I would say, continues to the Ian's I would say, ideas about the topics, yes. Because yeah, it's truly as a resonatable yeah, yeah, topic. Um, okay, so I think it's also kind of overlapping with our yesterday's yeah. conversations. Uh, I think because traveling back and forth here in London, Canada from here, Japan here, it was entirely different experience. Is and then I thought that we probably took landscape for granted we used to we just we put scape in everywhere like soundscaping you know landscaping inscaping and then all of a sudden traveling itself has become so difficult and probably we that could be but that's the reason why i decided to start from the rhetoric instrument which is mother nature the humanity, we love to abstract complicated notions and concepts so that we can, you know, label it, popularize it, so that we can understand it, we can exploit it. So also, yeah, landscape, other artists already have mentioned amazing comments, so probably I would also put some lights on 
the term itself, how we used the term landscape um, and how we can redefine it so that we can readjust to it. So that, the, the, the No Mother Nature was probably my first attempt to do that. And I don't have any specific plans, but as an artist, we talked about it with Herman uh, yesterday that probably all the artists participating in the in Inkscape projects, we are dealing with immersive media, sound, video, audiovisual performances. And probably this medium could be more dynamic and powerful platform to share the story rather than static medium, let's say. So then, because you mentioned that Jay asked about what is what will be the artist's role in the post-pandemic era, so probably we could deliver, we could express our thoughts and concept in a more interesting way, I hope. Yeah. Yeah. Hello? Yeah. Comments? Yes. Uh, this time I put my artistic director, curator hat. So present. Since the beginning of the pandemic, we we had to think differently to how to present artistic work. And uh, for example, Electra collaborated with, uh, on two exhibitions with Hyundai Motor Studio during the pandemic. So we had to find a way, okay, what can we show because we cannot ship anything. And um, and right now shipping costs are, were, are skyrocket, skyrocketing. <laughs> Let's say things like that. So we had to find new strategies, to, you know, to show work. And I think uh, the public also has to be aware that uh, all these constraints can be a, a strength, also in force, because we have to focus more also on local artists, uh, local artists that can travel around us, emer young emerging artists around our city, our province. And I think uh, this this is quite a, on this aspect. It's, this is quite positive, you know. Uh, like we're going, to, we last year we were supposed to sh to present our fifth uh, international digital art biennale. Three days before the opening, everything was shut down. There was a lockdown for five, six months, and we're going to present it next month in Montreal in November. So so we have a new opportunity. It's going to be augmented. But we kept the idea that, uh, you know, local artists are important. And I think the public also is quite aware of this new uh, thing. Yeah. Yeah. Really, uh, because really is because it changes all the schedule, not just merely to change the schedule, but also new, change the format and overall I would say the nature of the event itself, right? Yeah. And I, at this moment, I'm really curious about the two uh, amazing artists' opinion beyond the display because, you know, I would say both Shohei through the, I would say the performance project with me last year, Shohei, Kyoka, I would say God, I'm pretty sure that le not learned, but felt a lot and got some inspirations. And of course, you two guys have showcased the pra practices uh, many times since our collaboration last year. So I think I'm then really wondering and curious that tell me that since then, what did you felt, I would say, through our collaboration next year and what changed it and what it affected you and how does it that, how does that, I would say, influence your, I would say, practices since our last uh, collaboration. Um, who first, maybe Shohei or Kyoka? Hmm. Anyone? Hmm. Uh, are you guys listening? Hello? Kyoka-san? Hello. Yeah, uh, I'm hearing, so um, let me speak in Japanese to tell my thinking correct, correctly. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Jason, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, okay. 
So let me speak in Japanese uh, from here. Okay. Yeah, no worries. I will translate it. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Okay. So this uh, まあ、コロナ期間中、まあ、僕は、えっと、東京にいましたでそうですね、まあかんまあ、もちろんその、えー、していたと思うんですけどもその体験自体は入場制限をすることでそのクオリティが高まるというか質が高まっていたというような皮肉ですけど、まあ、そういった事実があったかなと感じてます。Mm. So, yeah, I would say that ironically, I would say that the, 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 when I worked at the work, that, when, I, when I was forced to, I would say, be in the two weeks quarantine in South Korea for this project as we are, that ironically elevated the quality of, the, 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 the quality of his, uh, the, the, his work because he has literally nothing. He's locked in the room, he has nothing else to concentrate on. That's one that interesting feeling that I. Experience than the project. And then, yes, go on. Yeah. <laughs> あとはその、まあ、リモートっていうのとその実際の場所っていうその場所に対してその依存するものは何かっていうのを考えていました。でその最たるものというか、まあそのまあ、音,音をその遠隔で共有するすべ。っていうのは、まあ、去年のパフォーマンスでもすごく、まあ、難しかった点かなと思ってますね。Yeah, so, um, because, you know, the, the, almost all the processes of collaboration should be done remotely, only via online. And particularly, you know, that the, the, in, the last, in, the, in the last year performance, the sound is, I would say, transmitted from the Kyokas Studios Berlin to the, 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 the presentation spot, the Chroma. The club spaces, which made us unbelievably difficult to, I would say, to, to build this performance. Yes? <laughs> で、えっと、そうですね。で、今回、ハルマンさんは遠隔でその作品を展示されたと思うんですけども、まあ、その遠隔で作品を展示するとか、えっと、まあ、インストールするっていう知識が著しくついた時期だったと感じています。So, so as I, I'm, I'm pretty sure Herman also felt that because he also worked with Jay remotely for installing all the, for the, all the installations, artworks in the Paradise Art Space as well. So, but, so which is also difficult, so, but I, I would say it's, it's more like it becomes a new reality yeah, uh, in, the, in, in the, all the artistic practices, uh, presentations uh, in, in, now, in the world we're currently living in. Yeah? And... でえっと、そして、まあ、これはコロナにはもしかしたら関係ない話かもしれないですけどそのその実際の場所にその作家アーティストがいない状況でその作品をその確実に実現していく手法っていうのは、まあ、かなりその考える必要があるかなというふうに感じていました。So, as I said, so the, 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 the cases, the artistic practices cases, without the artistic presence in the act, I would say, because of the pandemic, the, 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 the limitation on the travel, is now becoming more and more frequent, meaning that the artists in the future probably took, take it, not take it for granted, but take it into at least a part of some, I would say, there's some possible scenario that the, the, the artist should. Himself or himself to take into consideration as a very、uh, scenario with very high probability. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then, well, say, ma, say, say, go, this, kedo, it, so, this, ne, ma, corona, ki, can, chu, ma, e, zen, kara, corona, corona, no, mai, mo, corona, no, ato, mo, ma, so, no, sak, hin, wo, so, no, tsk, ru, to, ka, so, no, hito, ni, mi, ser, ti, ko, to, zi, tai, ni, tai, s h e ma, so, no, sak, ai, to, no, set, ten, wo, tsk, ru, to, ka, その人との接点を作るっていうすごく普遍的なものっていうふうに感じそ,それをつ強く感じましたねああのもう一回はいあそうですねえっとコロナ前とコロナ後で
、えっとまあ、変わらなかったことがあって、うん、で作品を作るということはその社会とか人とかとその接点を作る普遍的なものだなっていうふうにすごく感じました。Under this, I would say the changing paradigm, the, 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 the unchanging or the, 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 the constantly, I would say, the, 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 the remaining, maintaining the nature, of the,、uh, the nature of the artistic creation still lies in that the, 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 the manifestation、um, of the artists、uh, by、uh, interpreting. So、that his surrounding society and nature and all these surrounding and just, I would say, integrated and then reinterpreted it through his own creative processes,、uh, through any types of medium he uses. Yeah. Yes. And Kyokas? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's、Thanks、it. Thanks a lot. Okay. Kyoka, anything to say? Yeah, Kyoka, you're muted. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Finally, I speak. But my problem is my phone battery is now dying. <laughs> so I try to speak quickly. And uh, uh, yeah, first of all, thank you for having me for today. And、uh, another thing is, yeah, before pandemic, I used to travel all over the world for performance. And I. Kind of analyze the situation of like or feeling of the audience in front of me immediately, and I just output something and we're interacting with the audience. So it was more like an encountering performance I did before pandemic. But after pandemic started, suddenly I stopped traveling and、uh, physically I stopped walk around the I stopped to walk around the house and、uh, oppositely I started to go inside of myself. And it was a very interesting experience. And before I had no such a calm time for my own, like to explore about myself. And it was still abstract. So I wanted to make what's happening clearly about myself. So I started to search about the brain, like chemistry. Or some neuroscience thing, and also for sure, I'm a musician, so I start to check about the frequency and signals and、uh, yeah, some relationships of those. And、uh, when I played for your event last year, I could also really enjoy the sound check, especially because during the sound check, I play some. Certain sound, and I asked you and Shohei, like,、uh, with which part of your body you feel what kind of signal or what kind of feeling you have. And、uh, I could collect that kind of information from you guys, and I use that information for composing music for the real performance. And、uh, I'm not at the site because I played that remotely from Berlin. So, what I could do is just collect the information and guess what will happen and play that without checking by my own. So, many things w a s very based on my guess. And it was really virtual, real virtual for me. Maybe I have a different definition about the virtual. Like、my budget was more like guessing and observe and check output or something. And、uh, yeah, also another thing is I think I smoke everything. <laughs> so. Okay. So,、uh, yeah, really was.、Uh... <laughs> Really, I, would say, yeah, I still remember, I yeah, remember、mm-hmm. it like a yesterday. It's a really bittersweet、mm-hmm. episode in the、mm-hmm. last couple of weeks because k y o k a s o u n d performance based、yeah. on the very heavily on vibrations.、Mm-hmm. And vibrations、yeah. is the, one of the、mm-hmm. key aesthetics. But he could not check the,、mm-hmm. how the、mm-hmm. audiences are affected、mm-hmm. by the, her frequency. Mm-hmm. So she used me、yeah. as a sort of a,、mm-hmm. a sort of a m o r m o toward the. the, the 
Yeah, so I stand in the central stage you all saw yeah. in the chroma and have to mm -hmm. tell her what I feel, what I feel after she sends mm -hmm. the Sense the, yeah, the sense of frequency signal. Mm. Oh, it's now vibrating more intensively, or now yeah. it's, it sounds like a more peaceful. So, yeah, there's, yeah that's the processes we experience. Mm. And, and she just I would say, keep make improvements mm. and updates. Yeah, yeah, uh, mm. yeah, yeah. Kyokai, so yeah, just yeah. explaining. And also, sorry, <laughs> sorry. Also, what was interesting for me was during you and the other girl and Shohei was standing in a. Yes, center of the stage. I also try to imagine how much water you have in your body. Everyone has a different amount of water. So I thought it's so interesting because they are human being, but they are now like, like the device. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, so it was interesting. And a bit another thing is, like I was speaking about, I start to check about the human and the chemistry and emotion, conscious, blah, blah, blah. And uh, uh, as much as I understand about myself and how my emotion is controlled by the chemistry from brain, like I start to feel like I'm really the device. And also in worldwide or like, I don't know, in general, like, like we, as long as we understand our own, we could be kind of device. And uh, nowadays I start to think about the old time, like when we are still like more of you human being. So I thought this generation is kind of the last generation of being still could be pure human or pure device or more device. And this is a very interesting transition and because of the corona time gave me more time not to travel and go inside of me so i could have clearly more idea about the device as human as device and human as human and uh, i try to combine these things both together and i want to make more like artwork or inter installation or music something and uh, yeah it's what I'm doing, but sorry, I'm not sure I'm perfectly along with your question. No, but, no, 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 it was a, it was this a good... is my blah blah. Thank you for listening. <laughs> yeah, it was, a, it was an answer mm -hmm. with a good point, actually. Yeah, so you're outside, you're mm. outside the, 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 the creative approach yeah. the using the human as mm. really a device and. I would say it's mm -hmm. now the chain, the paradigm mm -hmm. changes uh, before and after the pandemic just also changed the, the landscape of your approach as well, right? So, um, yeah, definitely mm. yeah, that's going to be the one point yeah. uh, as, a, as, a, as, a, as mm. an example. Yeah. So, um, mm. Any, mm, any more comments about uh, the first topic? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, Herman. Listen to uh, all the other artists. It make me uh, think about maybe uh, now when some artists will have to create an installation uh, work. Uh, oh, we have a special effect just to uh, hide. <laughs> yeah, cool. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, when we we create uh, a new piece. Maybe now we will have in head to uh, to think about how this piece can travel, or maybe just create the concept and think about maybe it can be construct construct and produce in the uh, the country that invite this this piece instead to create and and you know uh, ship all the component and also it, we can use the component of the country so. At the first stage of the concept, conception, maybe we, we can have in, in our mind to have a concept that fit with this kind of dynamic. We don't need to ship and it's very, maybe more easy to, uh, to be built by the technical team. A uh, little bit like bacterium here. So uh, all the component was from here. We sketched the ID, but it, it, it was uh, complete and, and uh, assembled here with the, all the component from the country. So maybe some artists, because I think it's more easy like that, 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 uh, 
that think uh, 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 artwork with maybe the, the without the the shipping the, the official each time to ship uh, the, the the artwork then the material materiality yeah, issue yeah, yeah. Uh, that's got it so it's just materiality speaking of materiality that reminds me of my sec second topic that I prepared and my first I would say the, 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 the my first I would say the, the, the designation will go to the Lucas the materiality that the, the key theme you hand, you're handling so um so yeah, I mean, and Lucas is, I think, is the to the relevant one to be the first commenter about the second topic because he's the young, as I said, he's the most youngest one, and he has the, the I would say, the much more lifetime than we do in our remaining life. Because what I want to talk about is then is what is the artist? I would say the not a role, but it could be a, regarded as a role or meanings in the post-pandemic reality. As just, I would say, this actually question is is improvised heavily. I would say through the this I would say conversation between Herman and Ian's. I would say the yesterday's I would say premiere because you know that the artist has its own uh, not an advantage but more own, its own unique nature to 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 ability to provide some more perceptional. I would say things to deliver to the who's uh, to the audiences by making an artwork. So, in this, in terms of in the light of this, I think there will be some. I would say the values or meanings or the roles that only the artists could, not only but mainly artists could have a competitive, I would say, edge to do in the so-called post-pandemic society, not. Of course, it could be a ra a raising awareness about the re upcoming reality, but there could be many other things. So about this, I really want to hear uh, your opinion, starting from Lucas. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would say recently, like the artworks I've liked the most or that have moved me the most have been actually like artists that kind of have a vision of if there's a collapse, if there's like um, another world, there's some artists that are really anchored in actually the reality of like right now of how we could live in that world and how we could live happily and like maybe even better. Like um, I think uh, I like like kind of going beyond the dystopic um, stories we have of the future, you know, like and from science fiction, we have a lot of dystopia um, and I think we need like some more hope also and, and also ways to like, you know, project what, what we, what could be the future. So yeah, those kind of works that are working and, and that are set like in, in actual, like in the actual reality of the present with like a speculative fiction artist working on that, um, that's been the most inspiring way for, for me. And I would like to contribute maybe also to this. Um, yeah. And, it, and I think the, the pandemic was really a trigger to like keep going in this direction as artists. So. Super. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that, I think, yeah, that's the one point that I also have a, could be a food for thought in my future curatorial, I would say, practices as well. And this question also naturally calls for Yano's comment about this because because as I said, human AI is not just the theme that just art only deals with. It's more like a, I know that the, more like a food, could put hot potatoes for all, I would say the social domains, right? So technology, society, humanities, some researchers, academies and artists and scientists, all the people are saying something about the human AI relationship, of course. And it's frequently, of course, I would say, uh, the, 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 uh, it was as I mentioned and uh, the, uh, realized in very different ways that every, almost every way where we could imagine. So in terms of this, Yonos, your practice is also um, throws a lot, uh, not just questions, but implications to us. So uh, what do you think that your, uh, your role or your artwork's role or your, uh, you think could not just contribute, but anyway, through meanings to the future society. 
Uh, sorry again, uh, Korean. Uh, uh, 일단 뭐 예, 아티스트면 일단 뭔가 비전을 전해주는 게 가장 중요하겠죠. 예, 새로운 이디엄이나 뭐 어, 이렇게 급작스럽게 변화하는 이 세계적인 예, 뭐꼭 포스트 판데믹에 관련된 것만이 아니더라도 기술적이든 뭐든 여러 가지 사람이 사실 요즘 같은 경우 작가들도 적응하기가 힘들 정도로 이 기술의 진보라고 얘기하는데 뭐 어떤 사람들에게 진보가 될수 있지만 어떤 사람들한테는 이게 재앙이 될수 있거든요. 그래서 제가 사실 뭐 이번 작품도 마찬가지고 그리고 큐레이터 제이장님과 많이 얘기 나눴던 것 중에 하나는 뭐냐면 그러니까 이게 AI든 사람이든 결국 이게 소통에 관련된 문제라 너무 그렇게 기계적이거나 수학적으로 접근 그러니까 제가 많이 아쉬웠던 점들은 의외로 많은 예술가들도 너무 기술적인 부분에 초, 초점을 맞춘다든가 이렇게 그런 거에 따라가기 급, 급급한 느낌을 받을 때가 개인적으로 많아서 그러니까 어차피 이해도 못할 수준이잖아요. 사실 요즘에 AI 수준이라는 게 인간의 뭐 능력으로는 근데 그래서 근데 사실 AI AI라는 것들도 결국에 따지고 보면 이게 머신러닝이라는 게이 세상에 있는 거 배우는 거거든요. 사실 이 세상에 존재하지 않는 어, 규칙이나 이런 걸 배우는 게 아니라 기존에 나와 있던 여러 가지 상황들에 대해서 학습하고 그걸 이제 인간에게 편의를 제공한다는 거니까 그러니까 그걸 조금은 더 인물, 차라리 이렇게 기술적이거나 수, 수학적인 접근보다는 인문학적으로 접근하는 게더 낫지 않나 네, 그게 제가 이제 자, 저, 일단은 예술가로서 갖는 자세였고 그래서 저는 항상 얘기하지만 그러니까 컴퓨터 음악을 15년 이상 했으면서도 최근에 컴퓨터를 가, 가급적이면 멀리하려고 하는 이유도 그러니까 조금은 더 이렇게 저, 요즘 얘기로 하면 뭐 리얼 타임이니 뭐 인터랙티브니 이런 걸 통해서 그 순간 순간을 내가 살고 있는 거니까 그게 이제 뭐 어떤 날은 물론 이제 완전 망하기도 하죠 예, 퍼포먼스 하다가 어떤 날은 예상치 않은 어 아주 좋은 결과를 내는 경우도 있지만 그게 인생 자체고 그리고 그게 이제 AI 기술이라는 게 우리 주변에서 아주 자연스럽게 녹아 나 때쯤이 되면. 사람들도 좀 그런 거에 대해서 자연스럽게 받아들이고 오히려 나를 위한 나만을 위한 기술이 아니라 그러니까 서로 이해하려고 노력하는 거. 그러니까 사람도 사람이 서로 이해하려고 노력해야 관계가 완만해지듯이 기술이라는 것도 사실은 서로 어, 이해하려고 노력하고 뭐가 가능하고 뭐가 불가능한지 그거에 대해서 네. 이게 그렇지 않을까. So yeah, so his answer is basically so. The artist's main, in his in his point of view, the most artist's important role in uh, in society as an artist to I would say the the the, the envision so create the vision that could resonate with all the remain all the members constitute the society. So based on his uh, based on his artwork, that for example, so he, basically artist is not a the the, the AI AI. Technology itself just shows the eyes spinning speed of development, right? No one can, even the AI expert scientists could hardly catch up the paces of the, its development. So artists should not necessarily be the be the the, the, the the pioneering technician of the technology itself. What what he tries to to say is that artists should be the person who actually just catches the the the, 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 the catches the point the the, the Point he could be digging in, and the, 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 he could be, I would say, the, 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 the uses as a source of his creative inspiration. Then, just translated into our own language to through some um, through some discourses or at least some I would say the messages to the to the to the audiences. Particularly, I think, uh, in terms of the human AI relationship, as she says that, for example, even the human between human needs more. Uh, needs uh, needs time and effort to understand each other, right? So, according to his, as I said, his art world AI is a, is a, is a 
AI is a is a is a is a, the, the, the subject with uh, uh, is unique on identity and intelligence. So, for example, so human human there should be more deep considerations and more deep, I would say, contemplation about human AI relationship uh, relationship to understand each other more. I would say more relatively, more relevantly, and more appropriately, and more desirable way. And that's the area that the AI scientists, AI technicians, or, or for example, like a, like a, like a politicians or economists could not do that because they are just, I would say, thinking about more the rational benefit or rational the the the, the outcomes that they could, I would say, harvest from the AI, not the not considering the, 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 the overall, I would say, the, the, the directions about the human AI relationship. So uh, the, the humanitarian should do, so for example, ethic, ethicians should do, but artists could be very, to, could, take a, could take a very critical role in terms of this by making a, a, a meaningful practices and I say, showcasing to the public as well. That's what he think as a as a as an artist role in post pandemic reality. So, um, any more comments from you guys about this? I would say topic. Well, I mean, I just wanna I, one of the one of the I'm trying to formulate this right at the off the top of my head, but I think one of the uh, issues with technology in general is that it's often used as this um, solution and so sort of a top-down approach uh, for the way that we talk about technology and rather than uh, maybe always talking about this sort of situation we need to think about how technology is uh, is nature. Nature is kind of a, a technology in and of itself. Um, I had uh, the unique opportunity to work with some scientists who started to, uh, they were able to look at, you know, it's, as science does, they look at things that are smaller and smaller and they're able to kind of recreate these kinds of conditions and uh, structures that occur on a sort of a crystal and level and uh, what they said to me is, you know, what you have to understand is that, in fact, the highest technology is nature. And I, that, that really stuck with me. And I think that that's something we can all sort of think about as we uh, employ technology to sort of address kind of technological issues, which I think we sort of all, all do in our work. So. It was really a good point that, just, uh, that Matthew just pointed out that, yeah, I mean, Technology, it was also the issue that actually Ian and also the, the Herman, we discussed short, I would say quickly yesterday. So, I mean, they end the part of the premiere as well. So, um, yeah, I mean, it is, this is the, truly the discourse that we should, I would say, not, uh, the, 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 consider not as an artist, also that as a human being that constantly, I would say, the, 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 constantly uh, depending on and using and employing the technologies. Okay. Um, I think now it's already. 6 p.m. now, but I've got a final, I would say, things which is very delightful. I would say it's actually that not a it's actually it's actually a question rather than some sort of topic. So we all know that we are gonna this with this lineup we are gonna, I would say, the present an amazing another, I would say, the performance program in Quebec, Montreal, Canada, in next year 2022. So I assume and I. Um, I assume you already, already agreed that the, when the time has come to we fly to M Montreal and present our, our first global premiere version, then the landscape will be changed also quite, maybe at least a little, perhaps quite a lot. So people are now saying with corona or new normal, or I think personally do not like the term new normal because yeah, I don't agree. Anyway, so new reality, different landscape we are going to face in next year. So with this lineup, I'm very looking forward to it. But what you're simply saying, it's a really casual question, so don't take it seriously. What's in your head now for me and Alain and you all of you guys in Montreal 2022? Okay, so um, um, first it to 
Um, where is it to, yeah, maybe perhaps starting from Makina? <laughs> well, it feels like far away because it's still 2021, but um, I think the main thing is never ch gonna change. We are all human. We are all the same animals. And I think that's the key point that for my next show, 2022, that I'm gonna, I like to more keeping dealing this human emotions into the electronic sound. And yeah, I mean, <laughs> Korean gave us, gave, gave me really good idea that, I've been thinking about it, but I was always like to combine as a like theoretical performances. Um, so yeah, looking forward, maybe I do <laughs> or not. <laughs> yeah, that's my plan for now. <laughs> because, because there's already some chemistries between Herman and Makina for very ambitious plan in uh, 2022. So, I mean, this question also applies to Alang as you well, because you are, you're going to be the host next year mm -hmm. for the, all these amazing lineups. So, of course, artist vision for next year, but also as a, as a directors, I would say. Um, <laughs> sometimes I tend to have uh, some kind of, uh, I like dystopic visions and all this. <laughs> <laughs> it's it really inspired me uh, the need the strange nature of human and uh, because we I think we part of the world was parting parting very hard right now and so the pandemic was kind of a wake up call and I think it redefined all our uh, values. So, so it's going to be great to have all of you in Montreal next year, and we'll see what will happen. You know, things are going well in Quebec, Canada, and, and, and we'll see uh, what will happen with the rest of the world, and hope we can get out of this uh, thing <laughs> as soon as possible. Um, yeah, I think for my part, like for the next year, it's just, uh, you know, keeping refining this work and uh, especially like going more into research and the um, uh, kind of the sharing of knowledge and information. That's something we didn't talk too much about, but maybe, but like what's exciting now is like how much people are learning about other cultures, about you know, and that's the continuity, like from the beginning of the internet that happened and that, let's not forget that that's what was cool about the internet. And that's what I'm excited about, just like learning a lot of stuff, like building up knowledge collectively with like the external mind of the internet. Uh, so that's what I'm looking forward to, I guess, for next year. Yeah. Oh my God. Brilliant. So, okay, so I think I used up all the I would say the topics and discourses that I prepared, I have to confess. And any, if you guys, any, including the Kyokai, Kyokai and Shohei, uh, who are over there uh, virtually, if you guys have any comments or I would say questions or topic you try to throw for free, I would talk, uh, I, would, uh, I would take it as a last one and more than happy to discuss it. Any? Okay, cool. Okay, I think uh, the, the, uh, the, the entire staff for today will be delighted that because we are very, we could become very punctual yeah, uh, for artist talk session, which is highly desirable because their, 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 their atmosphere is more pre becoming more pressure on me. <laughs> so, um, yeah, okay. So I think I have to say at this point that we are now ultimately and officially reach to the end of Inkscape Voyage to Hidden Landscape 
Media Art Festival for 2021. And, and I have to say this uh, at this right away becomes, before I becomes too emotional, that <laughs> uh, this entire media art program was made possible uh, uh, this it was has been made possible uh, with the with the with the all devoted and even sac sacrifices of all the entire staff and artists and Alan the co co producer and the Quebec I will say the Quebec government and Quebec delegations amazing support and Canadian embassy support and the numerous I will say uh, numerous contributors and. I couldn't make it without even a single miss of this contribution. So as a curator and the director of this festival, uh, I think I, I can't thank you too much about your every single contributions that you made for me and this program as well. And I deeply appreciate it. And I will, I will do my best to, I say, to make it more meaningful, not just in the, 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 the future, with the Electron Montreal in 2022, but also throughout my life as a curator uh, to, 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 to make some meaningful uh, practices as a curator. So, uh, merci beaucoup, and thank you very much. Thank you for all of who watching this, and thank you for all who made this possible. Thank you very much, and we will see you in the future. Thank you. Thank you.